So in the bowl, I have warm water that has been sitting for probably about 15 minutes with some dry active yeast, um, just reactivating the yeast. You'll see that there's some bubbles that just shows you that the yeast is alive. So in this uh, measuring cup here, um, I have, you see that it's separated. There's your science lesson for the day. At the bottom, I have two thirds of a cup of honey. On top, I have two thirds of a cup of extra virgin olive oil and then two eggs as well. Um, trying to think of what I was gonna say. Oh, I am making a double recipe. So that's why it's two thirds of a cup of each thing and two eggs. If I was just doing a single recipe, it would just be one third of a cup of oil, one third of a cup of honey, and one egg. And in the bowl, I have three cups, I didn't specify that before, three cups of warm water and two tablespoons of yeast. So I'm gonna pour this in and we're gonna mix all of our liquid ingredients together and get them all going. show you my fresh milk flour. Ignore the mess. <laughs> so I usually will stir it a little bit with the back end of my brush just because you'll notice it'll get really kind of thick on one side where the thinner part of the, the flour went and you'll have the denser part in a different part so I'll spin it. I mean I'll mix it pretty good just to get it a little bit more better incorporated. So we're going to start adding some flour slowly. The recipe calls for about four to four and a half cups, but for fresh milk bread and really any bread, you can't ever go exactly by the measurements because so many other things play into it, such as your weather for the day, your altitude, and the humidity in your kitchen. So you just kind of have to go by look and feel, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I'll usually add about three cups per recipe, so about six cups to start, and just get a feel for where it's at at that point, before I'll add more. And honestly, because I've been talking, I've kind of lost count. I think I'm at four or five. All right, and at this point, I'm going to pull a mixture away from the bowl a little bit, because it'll crawl up the bowl and get all over the top of the mixer. Um, one of the beautiful things about the ink parts room is you can move the um, arm to where you need it to be and then lock it. So I'll pull it to where it, it's still mashing it pretty good against the edge, but it's locked. Now I'm going to add a little bit of salt. For this recipe, it's two teaspoons per recipe. So math geniuses out there, you'll know that's one tablespoon. By the way, these little things, these little doodads here, best ever. They've got yeast and stuff stuck to them, but um, this side, it says one tablespoon. If it, uh, the brand is healthy, I'll put a link for you. And then the side, other side, if you flip it through, it's half a teaspoon, uh, tablespoon. Same thing here, you got half a teaspoon if you push it through this way. You flip it this way, you got one teaspoon. And the same thing for the measuring cup. This side, as you see, is one cup. This side, if you pop it through, is half a cup. You can see that one as well because of the shadow. And then there's another one, but the cups come in a set, I believe, if, I don't, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they do because they have this little hook that I don't ever use. <laughs> this side is a quarter of a cup. Pop it through this way, and you have a third of a cup. So kind of handy, and I keep it all in a box together for my bread making purposes. So that's that. sunflower lecithin. This just softens it up a little bit. Gives it a little bit softer texture. I'm going to speed this up here in a minute. Right now we're just letting everything get good and incorporated. I'm going to switch my scooper back. I'm showing it to you. I left it on the wrong part. So I'm going to use a tablespoon of lecithin. One per recipe says it's 
I'm doing double, two tablespoons, and that's what gets stuck on there. <laughs> that gets kind of cooked up on the spoon. Alright, let's beat it up just a little bit. And we're going to start adding the rest of our flour. So you see right now, if I pull this away, do you see, I mean it pulled away a little bit, but it's still very, very liquidy, and it's very, it's still kind of going out to the edge of the bowl. When you've added enough flour to let it knead for a while, it's going to pull away from the edge of that bowl and you'll see the difference and that's when you're starting to get the, the consistency that you want. You don't want to just keep adding, you want to add a little bit at a time to get a feel for how well it's getting mixed in because if you put too much flour in, then you're going to get a drier dough. It's not going to be as squishy and soft. All right, so this is still a little wetter than what I like to see. up some more flour. I may not have enough. Usually at this point I would have probably only added a little bit of that spoon, but I'm pretty sure it's going to take the whole part. I'm going to add it all. Let's beat it up a little bit. And now, you see how it pulled away from the bowl? Let it go again. All right. It's still very shaggy. It's going to come together, but then when you pull it away, it completely comes away. So for now, I'm gonna let it knead just like this. And this incarceration is really nice because it has a timer that goes up to 12 minutes. So I'm gonna give it the full 12 minutes to start. The number that's pointing up is the number you're at. And I'm gonna speed this up. what the dough is actually doing, how wet it is. It's still fairly wet. And let's see if we can, I'm gonna just turn it off for just a second and see if we've got anywhere near window pane. I don't think that we will. See how it tears? See how easily that tore? That means we're not there yet and it's still very, very, very wet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it back. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra flour and then we're gonna let it need a little bit, or a lot longer. <laughs> for window pane again. Okay, you see how you can start to see a little bit of, it, of light through it? We're really getting there, okay? I'm gonna let it go just a little bit longer, but we're getting awful close, okay? And it's still very wet, but I like my dough wet. So for this part, the audio was not picking up and I didn't realize it, but basically what I was trying to share is that 
I don't like to add a whole lot of extra flour until I've let the dough have time to knead so I can see what it actually needs to have. If you add too much flour, you can't take it back and it might make your dough too stiff. I like my dough to be a little bit more on the wet side and then I can add a little bit of flour later on if need be. So this mixture is called an anchor, anchor shroom assistant and it is a beast. It is my best friend. I've been using it several times a week now for seven years, I think. And I've never had any problems at all. I will put a link to this as well uh, from Amazon, but you can get it from Breadbackers if you go to one of their getting started classes down in Woodstock, Georgia. On the days of the classes, they give you a discount. I think it's $100 off on those days. So if you're anywhere near Georgia, well worth your trip down there. And I'll put a link also for how to find the classes and get signed up for that. That is what I went to seven years ago, almost exactly. I believe it was mid to late June. I think it's June when I'm recording this. And that is what got me started. It made all the difference. That in this mixture made all the difference. My bread before I went to that class was very dense and it wasn't very good. My first loaf after I got back was light and chewy and rose really nicely. So the things that I learned there really did help. Plus, I'm telling you, this mixture is a beast. It, it, you can see that it's totally different from the way most mixtures work. It's actually kneading and mashing the dough and it has those little finger-like projections on the little roller here that really work the dough better and just pulling and tugging on it with the dough hook. This machine actually comes with a dough hook as well, but I don't like it. I, I, would, I like the roller much better. I think I tried to use it once or twice and I just, I just didn't love it. So I'm gonna stick with what I know and what works well, and that's the roller thingy. we're doing and see there we got a good stretch before it's starting to tear you'll still get a little bit of tear just because of the brand but you can see see how you see light through there that's your window pane and some people would want to go a little further to get it a little bit more stretchy and you can do that but I'm ready to let it rise so okay, I managed to knock my <laughs> video off somehow but I've taken the mixer and everything out I'm gonna let this just sit here you can see it's still a little bit sticky but again, I do that on purpose and you'll see why when it's time for me to roll out the dough, you'll see how nice and squishy and soft it is to make a nice squishy soft bread. So I'm gonna let this sit here for about an hour or so and then we'll come back and roll it out to four more loaves. Okay, so you can see our dough has rised up, risen up, uh, risen up really nice and fluffy. So it is ready to be rolled out. There are lots of ways you can tell. I just know that it was it's way more than double what it started, but if you'll push into your dough, you see how it's not jumping right back up? That tells you that it is ready. If you poke your finger in and it goes bloop real fast back up, then it is not quite ready. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I've cleaned my surface. First thing I'm gonna do is scatter some flour. And I'm gonna put it up here too because we're gonna make some rounds and it's gonna need to rest before we roll it out. All right, yeah, extra because like I said, this is very wet dough. And it's gonna get all over the floor. <laughs> she cleans it up later. All right, so, I'll scraper. Sorry if I'm banging the microphone. Here's our beautiful, soft, fluffy dough. top just to give it a little bit of less stickiness but actually the dough feels really good it's a little sticky but it's it's not bad at all so all I'm gonna do right now is just kind of get it into a nice round to where it's easy to cut in half and get it relatively close to even right. so 
just gonna roll it to where I've got a nice big wad of it. And then I'll take my scraper and just kind of eyeball it and estimate where I think half is. This one's actually a little bit bigger, so I'll take a little chunk out and stick that on the bottom. We'll roll that in here in a minute. All right, so this is the part where you're gonna make a roll, round out of it. I don't know if that's the actual official term, what I call it. I just take it and I work it until I've got a nice ball. The bottom is ugly, but it doesn't matter, and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, you just want the top to be nice and smooth. All right, and then once you've got it nice and smooth like you like it, sit it back there to, to um, rest. All right, now I'm gonna make this one the same way. Just kinda, I pull the edges in when it's uneven like that, just to try to help it smooth out some. This one's a little bit wetter, and it has a little bit rough edge on top, so get some of that flour off the top. And you see how the top is a little bit torn still from the way it wasn't smooth. So you just keep stretching and pushing under, stretching and pushing under, stretching and pushing under, and you see it's getting smoother and smoother and smoother on top. Stretch and push under, stretch and push under, stretch and push under, and now the top is now smooth. So I'm gonna take this roll and stick it back there. And I'm gonna wait for about five minutes before I start rolling it out, because if you do it sooner than that, you're fighting with the dough. It's gonna wanna recoil on you and it's gonna wanna not, not roll out easy. Whereas if you let the dough rest and it's gotten nice and relaxed, it will roll out nice and easy. While I'm waiting, just getting my flour ready for when I do get ready to roll it out. Okay. And just a few minutes ago, that just a few minutes ago, I've got my bread pans ready. These are the bread pans I use the most often. These are Norpro Extra Larges. Um, they do require some oil or non-stick spray. I try not to use the spray, but if you use that, that's fine. Um, I just don't like the chemicals that are in it. But so this is um, a Norpro Extra Large that has already gotten some olive oil. You can see it's shiny. I took olive oil and rubbed it all over all of the surfaces. You can see it's a it's a normal like the this the size of a loaf of bread that you would buy at the store, the full sandwich loaf. That's how long it says, I believe it's 12 inches. Okay, give this just a few more minutes and then we'll roll it out. Okay, so it's time to roll out the dough. You can tell this is kind of spread a little bit. It just looks more relaxed. We'll see if we've waited long enough. enough. I forgot to look at the clock, so I don't really know if it's been five minutes, but we'll find out. I'm guessing by the way it's already kind of pulling back, it's probably not, but that's okay. So, you just get your bread roller. You can do it with your hands if you want to. It's just gonna take a little longer, won't be as flat, but that's okay. Just roll it out. This is kind of staying out a little bit. You see, I mean, it's recoiling a little bit, but not too bad. All right, and I do find the first one is a little harder to do, especially when I have a camera sitting here, <laughs> because this, is, this other round is in the way, and so it's a little harder to get all around it and everything, but that's okay. So sometimes I will roll this out thinner if I'm doing something like cinnamon rolls. So when you do cinnamon rolls, all you do, I mean, it's the same exact bread dough. You roll it out like I'm doing right now, but you get it as thin as you possibly can. And then you put your goop on top and the goop is just butter, brown sugar or sucanat is what I used to like to use and cinnamon. And you sprinkle it out and then you're gonna roll it just like what I'm rolling it and it's gonna create that nice little swirl. And I'll do a video of that um, next time I do them. I almost did it now. I'd almost decided I would do it now. But since I've already oiled two bread pans, I don't wanna have a bread pan oiled just sitting in the cabinet oiled. So it's too late for today. So all I do is I just start to roll and then I kind of give it a little stretch and push my thumbs under and roll. Stretch, push them thumbs under and roll. Everybody does this different. This is how I do it. I've tried other ways. Nothing seems to be any different than this, and this is the easiest. So right, what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of pinching underneath, trying to pinch that opening. And then once I've got that, you know, kind of sort of tight, I roll my ends under like this. And I roll the other end under like that. And I'll move my pan over here. Usually I take the bread to the pan, but since I'm doing the video, I'll do it where the video can see, and I'll just take it and I'll stick it in the pan. And if it didn't lay flat, that's fine. I can fix it. And then just kind of, I like to mash it a little bit just because if I don't, 
then the ends are a whole lot smaller than the middle. They still end up being smaller, but at least this way, I've got a little bit, I, I kind of give it a little bit of a curve in the middle down so that um, maybe it's a little bit flatter on top. That's just how I do it. There's a thousand ways to do it. That's how I do it. All right, so I'm gonna take what's left of the flour rather than just wasting it, scoop, scoop it and then rescatter it. By now, the top of the bread is pretty dry and it doesn't tend to stick anymore. When you first pour it out and you've got the rough edges, it'll stick, but now it, it won't do it as much. So I'm actually gonna go through this and pick up all that flour. Oh, and so I was gonna tell you why the bottom doesn't matter. So the top is the, the, the side that you made all nice and smooth. That's the top of your bread. The bottom side, see this was the rough side, it's gonna be the inside of your bread. So you're never gonna see it and that's why it doesn't matter. I forgot to say that in the first one. So you just make the top, when you're making your rounds, you just keep on going until you have a nice smooth top and you'll sit and let it rest. And you roll it out, however you like to roll it out. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so. This is an old, bread roller. I don't even know where I got it from, but I like it because I don't have to move my hands. The thing just moves. I actually bought one. Oops. Um, I bought one that has, um, you know, like measurements and stuff on it, but you have to manually roll it with your hands. Like you have to, you know, kind of do this thing. I don't like it. I've used it like once or twice and I don't use it very much beyond that. I like my old one that I don't know if I got it from my grandmother. I, I really honestly don't know where it came from. Had it forever. So just doing the same thing with this one, rolling it up. If you have, I don't know if you've noticed, like, there's little bubbles here on the inside, it won't matter. If you end up having them on top, you can um, pop them up. You can just give it a little pop and that'll usually clear them out. All right. All right, that looks good. So we're just gonna lift it up and drop it in our pan. You see there's a bubble forming right there and just kind of pop it. It's not gonna ruin anything if it doesn't pop. I don't think it did. All right, and there's our bread. So, throw off my flour so you can get a nice picture of it and see what it looks like. And now we're gonna wait for our second rise, which will take yeah, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. While I'm doing this, or while I'm waiting on this rise, I'll usually, sometimes I'll cover it with a, a towel. Sometimes I won't, just kind of depends on what I think about how dry the dough already is because I don't want it to dry out too much in the air. But I'll also, while I'm waiting for this, go ahead and preheat my oven to 350. And I will let you know what it looks like when I put it in. All right, so here's what they look like. I think they've done a second rise. You can see they're about maybe an inch or so above the pan level. Usually when it's about an inch above, that's when I put them in. So give it a little press. It's a slow rise back. It's not like a super spring. So that is when I decide to put it in. All right, going in for about 33 minutes at 350. And here they are. So the only problem with my bread is that for some reason, my yeast is so active that it rises so crazy high that every single time I have this torn area. But I'll tell you, you know, I've kind of gone back and forth. It's not pretty. I mean, if you look at it, it's a little lopsided instead of having that nice flat top. But my goodness, when you have bread that rises that high, you know it's going to be good and squishy and delicious. So, I mean, it is, it is rough looking here and it's so big that it's really hard to fit into my bread bag, but that's okay. I'll take it. I've, I've, um, I actually don't put as much yeast in the recipe anymore as it calls for. Um, because of this, I've used two different kinds of yeast. I've used instant yeast and I've used active dry yeast. Both do the same thing. So it is what it is. Here's the finished product out of the pans. So if you really want it to be pretty and not to appreciate the tart too, you look at it from the same way. If you want the whole picture, <laughs> you look at it around this way. Either way, it's delicious. And when I slice it here shortly, I will show you the crumb, which is the inner portion, so you can see. But if I slice it at this point, it's going to fall apart because it's just too warm. Um, I use an electric knife. My dear friend Dawn recommended this, um, and it is one of the best things I've bought. I did have a really good quality bread knife from Pampered Chef, 
Um, and I still use that from time to time, but this gets you a thinner slice um, because you can control it a little bit better. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. Look at that beautifulness i'm holding the the bread in behind it but look how beautiful and squishy see it's going to be just as squishy as your kids are used to having it is delicious i wish you could smell it and taste it but you can't so i wanted you to see the crumb that's what the inside of the bread is called the crumb and so i'm going to go slather some butter on this while it's nice and warm and i hope that you have great luck with it <laughs>